really able to select the relevant features and the improvement of accuracy comes from this. And the GC progression is also able to discard some of the least uh, relevant features. So for example, on the second double on the right, there are the energy portion of four different features that are really lower to a minimum. So as a conclusion, our GC progression is really able to adapt to the way to on the difficulty of the class and also on the, its uh, specific characteristics. So now another thing we wanted to try is to try to see if we can enforce uh, similar labels or a similar image <coughs> by trying to leverage the uh, unsupervised knowledge we can extract from uh, just similarities in the stacking feature space. <coughs> so to do this we investigated the use of a CRF, so it's an idea we previously applied to reunification and the first try we went on another task. So the idea is to define a CRF uh, where all samples are the nodes of the graph and you connect uh, these samples with, uh, within the K, KNN graph uh, in the, where the nearest neighbor are selecting the stacking feature space. And we uh, adopt an energy immunization formulation where you have the data cost for each sample and the smoothness cost. So for the data cost, we use uh, uh, the, the output of the logistic regression. So uh, if a class is given, uh, if a sample is given a higher uh, high score by uh, for, of uh, this class, the cost will be low. And so we are, can easily assign this label. Uh, and the smoothness cost relies on two aspects. Uh, one being the similarities of two samples that we want the edge connecting to samples that are really similar <coughs> to impose uh, a very strong constraint on the energy minimization. And the other part is the level cost that depends on how easily you can confuse uh, some labels. So you want to allow the energy minimization uh, solving to switch uh, some labels that are easily confused on with each other. So when we applied this uh, uh, energy immunization and we solved it by graph cut, so we obtained a the final performance of 85.71%. Uh, uh, so uh, what exactly the CRF does, uh, we investigated this uh, in a paper submitted to pattern recognition. It does help to import uh, the labeling of ambiguous sample that just lies nearby the uh, the, uh, the margin of the classifier, or uh, this idea that they are really uh, given similar weight, similar scores by different classifiers, and it's hard to select it. And with this uh, neighborhood constraint, we can really push them towards the correct class. So this is the graph is between the class and all these videos. <coughs> between the video, between each sample of your of your problem. Yeah, each sample is connected to its uh, K nearest neighbor in this uh, stacking feature space. So it's the concatenation of the output of the class uh, features experts. No, it's 11 times 101. So Yeah, if, um, if you have, yeah, it's a curse of dimensionality, so you can try to reduce uh, your dimensionality to have something, uh, some space, some feature space where the canvas number is more reliable. So the idea of the CRF is if you have some, you can improve from two sides. If you have better classifiers, you can get better data cost. And if your feature space is more relevant, or you can also run some metric learning, you can find better nearest neighbor. So you can really play on the two sides of the, of the CRF formulations. So, so these labels of these videos um, can, will, after this, they will change, like a particular video may have class five can change the name or something? 
Yeah, so it can change. Uh, so if you have one sample that is really either class 5 and 10, the scores are really similar, but from the neighborhood you get many samples that are similar and text only the level 5, the energy minimization will give the level 5 to be so, so you do this for all classes and all the Yeah, we do this in a single run. We put all samples in the CRF and we just run one energy minimization. Okay. So here, just a summary of this uh, before we submit it, so the, our baseline with uh, only the hard assigned uh, features given by the organizer, the addition of uh, all features in the late fusion scheme, and then the logistic progression uh, model, and finally the CRF. So see that every step does give a significant improvement. So as a conclusion, uh, the data including uh, clearly makes a difference, and many of the uh, Submissions to workshop did uh, some feature encoding or lab, and it's the right thing to do. Uh, the logistic regression for stacking has some interesting property to leverage the power of many uh, task features and experts. It automatically uh, adjusts capacity for depending on the, uh, if the classes are uh, easy or hard and can select the relevant features. And the CRF, CRF uh, incorporates the local simulacy constraint to obtain the uh, more reliable labeling. So future works are uh, in two directions. Uh, first, the test of uh, the logistic progression for starting with even more uh, classes and features to see if the model is still reliable. And also run some special and temporal pooling because currently we didn't do any. Also, maybe it may give some improvement. So here are some references. So the uh, say dinner 2013 is the local pyramid seed descriptor and uh, Leveraging local neighborhood is the submitted uh, paper to pattern recognition. That's all, thank you. Yes? Can I just ask you how much time it took you? It seems quite a, quite a substantial approach. How much time it took you from design to implementation and conduct of this thing? Uh, so, actually, uh, so the extraction of the features, we have to solve some issues on the cluster, so also this. Uh, a bit of the time, but uh, 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 we spend, uh, I'd say, uh, 10 full working days on the, on the challenge, and uh, in the stacking aspect, what can be heavy is to have this multiple fold to reconstruct the training samples, so this is more or less the bottleneck of uh, the approach, and uh, for the CRF, there are many samples. Uh, the construction of the new sample graph can become an issue. Currently, with these 13,000 samples, it's not really an issue. It's just like an order of one or two minutes to put the new sample graph. Yes? So, can you say a little more about this? Where is the sparsity that comes in? The, spars yeah. the sparsity of the model obtained from the logistic regression? Yeah, where is the model? The idea uh, is that you want to select some outputs of uh, expert uh, from different features and if the expert uh, of this class on all the features are really reliable, you can just take more or less the sum of them and don't use any other ways. But when your class feature experts are not reliable, that any of the uh, uh, so this class uh, cannot be the, the good score. You may want to try some neg to find some negative supports from the other classes, saying that maybe the classifiers of the other classes are able to say that this sample is not from this class. So you get many, many uh, small negative weights <coughs> because this is a bit less reliable than the positive score of the, the class classifier. And so this is why for hard classes, I think the model tends to give uh, much more Way so a less sparse model and also many negative weights to all the other classifiers. So these weights are not for the features, but these are weights for the for the examples. And the class <coughs> there are there are weights given to the classifier outputs. So you, you here you really learn one classifier per feature per class and just uh, put this the output of the. Uh, 
is transferred in this tracking feature space. And so the weights given by the model are just the multiplicative weights of this object. So uh, for easy classes, you give some rather high uh, positive weights to the class experts. And if you values all the class experts, that can also give you some uh, support. And on the other hand, for uh, uh, hard classes, you will give many negative weights for all the non class experts. So, so you, you have 101 classifier, or do you have, for each feature, you have a separate classifier? For each feature, we keep a separate classifier. So the total dimension is uh, 1111. Here I show you some results. You can see uh, we just do a simple PC and fast fighting 
free free per session. We have the solid line, which is, is the, the more server user, PC and the plus Python. And uh, we have also the Dash line, it does not use uh, uh, PC and Python, or does not use PC and Python per session. And uh, the different uh, color means the different encoding or service, actually has three, feature right here, and the LLC also we carry this way. For all the merge server, PC plus Python has significantly improved performance. Okay, so next two. I think my, I noticed many team use PC, but not many team move to uh, Python. And this also can improve. Compared to use PC only, PC plus Python can improve the performance further. So why did you just remove the, the right, 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 right. Yes, yes. It's, it's, I think it's the important because for some uh, uh, some dimension of the PC after the PC introduction, the words are very small. And it's a, it makes the PC, uh, it makes the GM training or convenient as stable. I believe there may be some better transformation than this more server, but uh, it's uh, 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 on table choice, it's a good choice, I think. Okay, the second thing I want to say is the encoding more server. We have noticed many teams use the feature right and the RED. Yes, they're very effective. Actually, we noticed this uh, at the 2011. Actually, we have a paper in 2012, I think the first paper, which applied Fisher Wiser on machine recognition. Uh, for, for, this, for this table, we only use this. We call this paper about uh, two years earlier. Uh, in, finally, in this paper, in this talk, I will combine it. Yeah, I will talk the relation later. That's the key relation. And uh, first, I have some comment on Fisher Writer. Fisher Writer, you know, is defined uh, with the Fisher kernel as the derivative of the parameter of the universe GNM manifold as a given set of the descriptors. Actually, in my view, Fisher Writer is very related with the GNM adapted supervisor, which has been long popular used in speaker recognition, as some of you know. You know, it is like this. We have a, we have a universal <coughs> background GMF like this, and we have some new point here. And uh, in the GMF adaptation, it will adapt this kind of GM according to a new input date. Okay, what the feature writer capture is actually the difference between the two GMF, which means this, uh, this, this circle, this solid circle, server the circle, and this dash circle. For example, if, it's, if you only consider me, it's like this writer, like this red lines. Um, but for in, in speaker recognition, for GMM adapted super writer, it only use the oversold partition, not the related partition of these GMM centers. Actually, like a few years ago, we have a paper, um, uh, we write a manual structure on GMM adapted super writer for action recognition. But unfortunately, this paper was rejected a few times. And later, we realized some other <coughs> public official work and we gave up this idea. I, I just want to emphasize that the performance of official work and the GMF definition work is uh, very simple. And uh, it's the key idea, although it's developed in different areas, the key idea is, is near. Okay, the other thing I want to say is about VRAD. Also, VRAD, just as you said, the condition and the hard version of official work which use the k-mean to replace GMM, and uh, also it originates the mean difference uh, of each cluster. And uh, we also try another VRAD uh, to solve the VRAD, which means that it is still use the k-mean to run dictionary, but uh, for each local disk driver, it's associated with the k more, more than one year is a cluster. So, so it can, for each disk driver, it can work for multiple clusters, and just given by this equation, it's, a, it's a similar to solve the same for the VQ or server. And uh, it may, so you want to know which is the buffer, so we have some information. Here, this uh, means the number of uh, the cluster we use uh, in data size, and this is the recognition accuracy. Actually, you can see for, uh, for the, if the cluster number is not so large, if, if it's a number of cluster or the size of this, you know, not so large, and the traditional variety give better performance. But if the cluster and the cluster, if the size of the dictionary is larger and the soft VRED can, can improve the recognition rate of a few bits. 
Now, th th this because you know, if you have very large uh, cold, cold bulk, and uh, and uh, if you only select one, maybe the one, uh, maybe, maybe there are the multiple uh, multiple words which maybe can be near to the input of these characters. So the final thing I will not say is about the normalization of facial recognition of VRAD. Actually, we, we, we use uh, three normalization. One is the power normalization. We also know that many, uh, some team do this. It's just a normalization like this equation. And uh, another one is the R2 normalization is given by this equation. Uh, one thing uh, <coughs> is different between our approach and other is that we also try internal normalization. That's uh, we, we normalize the vector according to each input company, which means according to each Gaussian or each K-mean cluster. And uh, we notice that this, uh, this can also improve performance. So here you can see the results. Uh, we find that for both facial work and the VRED, the root of uh, the power normalization plus L2 and plus internal normalization to the better performance. And uh, also, the second one is given by power and R2, which is widely used by most of the, uh, by the least people, widely used by many teams. Finally, we find that it's just a very linear thing with the combined feature work and the sub VRED. And this also can lead to some, uh, can lead to some improvements. It also doesn't achieve, but not so much. And uh, this gave our, uh, our system for this uh, challenge. I mean, because we have very short time to take part in this challenge just after the CUPR deadline, we use three or four days on this task. Uh, the students are very tired of combining, I think, when you're face. So, so we did not do everything what we want to do. Actually, we, all, actually, we originally want to do, uh, do something I will talk later. We try to do some mid level symmetric representation for this task. And uh, we want, uh, just as I mentioned by Dr. Beijing, and uh, we made some mistake on our submission for this result. We just uh, uh, missed the take between the index of this. Uh, these two pair of classification, which which is the the left y the color result is lower than the correct result we should call. Our correct result should be eighty seven percent. Okay, I think that this will come to the first part of my talk. And the second part is that we want to talk about the several semantic and middle level representation we developed for IT recommendation. The first one is the motion light. Actually, in this, in this work, we try to find uh, some special temporal parts for IT representation. The second is that we try to mine some usable temporal structure for part of uh, this classification. Our motivation is like this. You know, when we first write an origin, we want to we first see which are successful more search in the image field. We for example, human detection the part better than the other So, and, uh, so what we say, uh, how, how does this mean? I think we can learn two things from this kind of approach. The first is uh, it divides the complex object into relatable simple parts. That's what we want to do for thing two. The second is it model, it will develop a model to model the structure between different parts. And uh, these are two things that we want to also generate to for action. So what are good parts for the relation? So that's the question. I think that we have three. Uh, three part, uh, three uh, properties. Well, the third, I think, is the repeatability because this kind of part can repeatedly appear in different type of uh, actions and different, also in different uh, videos. Second, it is the reprintability because we can use this kind of part to reprint uh, different kind of videos and, uh, and different kind of actions. The last is uh, has the discriminability to for classification. So then, then we have a strict question to, to, to solve to how to define how we use. Actually, we have two approaches here. One is the motion light. The motion light, in this part, we only try to find the special temporal parts. And then in the second part, we only find the temporal part, but we try to remind the temporal structure of part, which means we use different parts, different parts, which is called motion instrument, which is motion grid. We also notice that there are some similar papers, uh, similar here, the our paper in the ICC way this year, which is quite similar to machine light. 
Okay, most in, uh, when we do machine light, what we see is like this, you know, in X-ray generation, there are, there are, at that time, there are two popular parts. Why do you know for this factor? I just, I talked in the first part of this bit, you know, how, 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 and each and the two, and the UW official writer will summarize this kind of this factor for the documentation. The other work in treating the, uh, the axiom bump, you know, it does not use local feature, but it uses some uh, video volumes as the axiom bump and some global template, which is basically called template for the representation. What we think is uh, the local driver is the size is too small to have to pull the local and repeat the limiting, but the discrepancy is limited. Why is it bump? It has the share of the local and the discrepancy is but it's, they cannot be repeated well by different kind of actions. So what, what we come to do is we just try to buy, make a balance between the local features and the high level presentations that we do with the motion light. We can share the both advantages, low level and high level features, and have a good repeatability from the big case. What, I, what we did is actually very simple. We first uh, find some motion silence region, and then we cut the silence regions into some candidates for the motion light. And then we and then we define and then we use some okay. Then we use some uh, similarity function to cluster into candidate motion light. And then we use some discriminative and uh, repetitive measure and uh, to, to make the run and uh, select the uh, the motion light we have uh, we think uh, food for regeneration. And the brief, and uh, I do not have time to give the detail, but I can show you some motion light we can find from different data sites, from KTH, from UCF, and from HMDB. What we found is for simple database, like KTH and Vizma, this kind of more survey can really find some meaningful and repeat, repeat the, uh, the, the lines. Uh, but for UCF, Vizma, and HMDB, for large data like this, it can be find something meaningful, but something may not be so meaningful. It uh, cannot it may not be related to generation. I think this problem is the sort of feature. So, so these are what we have special temporal regions, which yeah. are which have silence in that what is silence? Yes, we support the build HOE is tempt of among the of uh, the silence of motion. And with this silence line, we can find the generation also in the video volume. We'll find some cobalt. And, uh, and, and, and we try to cobalt as a candidate for, for motion lines. Then we estimate the similarity between the different motion lines for the cobalt and two clusters. And we use the cluster center as a candidate for motion lines. And then we work. We, we just, because there will be a very large size of the candidate at this time, and some does not relate to any actions. So we run according and the select according to their repeat uh, uh, the frontier and this kind of thing. So this is each special sample mm -hmm. with the region um, is the same size, same number of different size. size. That, that, that's a very good question. That's a collaborative key that you know, so that different size. First, I think the fall two two ways so with very different size, we just uh, uh, so we think we just need to different motion light because we want the motion light with different scale. But for uh, motion light with similar size, we just match it like in this way. We just uh, find the overlay which gives the best similarity. Which gives the best similarity. So is it like, I mean, is it like a superboxer? Like what is this and it's a superboxer? Yeah, 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 it's related. It, basically, it's similar, but it's captured in a different way. For supervisor, we do segmentation for the way to run it. Here we do it. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyway, our results like this. First, uh, for the, our ranking Mercer, because we saw the ranking and select Mercer, the kind of people better, better Mercer. This blue line in with you the all the time. Actually, it's performance is even worse than you than you was part of it. And this uh, black line means uh, Randomness for both HMDB and UCIPT that our selection process is very important. The second thing we want to say is uh, if we combine the motion light with low level features, we can get further improvement. That's actually what we want to do for UCF 101, but we do not have time to do at that time. We try to combine 
the middle level plantation with the low level plantation. We believe with the type father improvement for the ratio. We call it up, uh, start calling up for 1881, for UCF 50. We, we already showed the improvement to combine the middle level plantation with the low level plantation. Okay, the second thing is that we try to adjust side the structure between both and uh, between different parts of the part. So we combine the motion atom into fluid and also run the motion all the time and go on your packing. And uh, we further determine the motion atom and uh, this is the motion requirement. And we combine motion atom into an all structure. So all structure of the translation of motion atom to deal with the time of rescue operation. And the end operation try to combine the sequence of motion atoms. Also, we develop some more many algorithms to find the motion rate with the combination of several motion atoms. Here are some examples we find from the omitted data side. And I think uh, 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 it's very similar to human perception of this kind of spots. For example, for the diving spots, we will find standing, we will lead to one motion atom, and the jumping the foot will lead to another motion atom. This is for the uh, long jump, and the, the three parabolic jump will lead to one step, and the inner jump in the air to another motion atom. Okay, also, we find that we use the motion atom and motion free to kind of improve the performance uh, compared with the motion atom. Okay, here is the summary. The first I talked about the current occurrence, maybe you want to, look, want to know. You can find the detail into our performance. It's very linear, but I think it's helpful for you to improve the performance. And the second thing is that we talk about some ongoing work. We try to develop some semantic and interpretation. Actually, we want to do this for a lot of these skills in the site, like you said, one by one. Also, I think the most actually detection might be a treatment problem, also, for a lot of treatment using this kind of ideas of communication. This work is deep with uh, the reading with us to our students, to our photos, <coughs> some you. Also, we also have some detection results, so we can show them. This uh, MSR for this site is relatively simple compared to those yet one by one. And this different color means different, uh, uh, mean different uh, part of the different part of the motion. We try to detect from the video. In this case, we consider both the, 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 the time for motion part uh, feature of each part and the relationship to different part. For example, if we the hand waving, this kind of local uh, action will be to know by our detectors. This is below in our time some template from our more so thank you.